October are one of our favourite projector brands, not least because they're always the ones really pushing the boundaries when it comes to the all-important gaming market. This has never been so important with the launch of the latest generation of game consoles at the end of last year. Gamers are likely looking to upgrade their display to get the best from their new hardware, and October are hoping that they'll consider ultra-large screen gaming instead of opting for one of the latest TVs. Until recently, gaming on a projector meant 50 milliseconds or more input lag, which compared to gaming monitors or even some of the latest TVs just wasn't good enough. In come Optomo with models giving us 16, then 8, and now today, 4 milliseconds of input lag, meaning that you can literally be a competitive gamer on a 100 inch plus screen. So let's take a look to see what these new models offer and whether they should be on your purchase list. This is the UHD35. It's a brand new model that launches alongside the UHD38, both exactly the same with the only difference being the brightness. They replaced last year's model, the UHD30, which offered as low as 16.7 millisecond input lag when running at 1080p 240Hz. These new models introduce a number of new features over the old model, but for the most part, general usage is exactly the same. There are a 4K UHD projector using the Texas Instrument DLP chip. This is a 1080p chip that uses its ultra-fast switching capability to shift its pixels and quadruple its display resolution so fast that it just looks like one picture. But in these last two generations, Optoma realized that it could also be used to display ultra-high refresh rates in its native 1080p. So what we get is a projector that gives us the best of both worlds. 4K for games and movies up to 60Hz and then up to 240Hz for gaming in 1080p with only 4 milliseconds of input lag. Let's take a look at what these models have to offer and see how this one, the UHD35, performs in our studio. From the outside, the UHD35 and 38 look identical to the previous model as they use the same chassis. On the back are two HDMI 2.0 ports, an upgrade on the last generation, which only featured one 2.0 and a 1.4B. This means you can have the full resolutions and refresh rates in both connections this time round, which is something we've been asking for, so thanks for listening on that one, October. It sounds like a small thing, but previously you had to invest in extra hardware to be able to have two 4K devices plugged in. Now you could have a 4K streaming stick in one port and a PC or games console in the other without compromising. There's stereo audio in and out along with an optical jack for 5.1 surround sound pass-through. Then on the other side there's a VGA port and a USB port offering 1.5 amps of power for a streaming device like a Fire Stick or Roku so you don't need a separate plug for it. There's also the old RS-232 port for those wanting to add automatic control of an electric screen. Moving on to the top, you have this series of buttons, which allows you to control all aspects of the menu system, should you not wish to use the ultra-bright remote. There's also the status lights and picture adjustment slider. Both the UHD35 and 38 offer the same 1.1x optical zoom, which is not a lot, but it's enough to make mounting and setup easy, as it gives just a few inches of adjustment. Like the UHD30, these new models do have a slightly longer throw than many of Optoma's other projectors, so it's important to check the distance you'll need to achieve your screen size as it may not be the same as one you already have if you're upgrading and want to mount it in the same place. If you're installing new then just make sure you have enough space from your screen. We used a 92 inch screen and the UHD 35 required a minimum of around 10 foot to fill it versus the UHD 42 which needs a minimum of 8 foot compared to an ultra short throw projector like Optoma's Cinemax P2 which needs a mere 1 foot 8 inches. Once you have your setup distance, then you simply need to turn the lens to focus. What these new models do over the old ones is an enhanced picture correction. The UHD30 only offered vertical keystone correction, whereas the new models have a corner by corner system, which allows for much better adjustment. These are only digital though, so be aware that you are losing out on picture quality if you do use them. They're really only recommended for occasional use, say if you were getting the projector out at a party or using it outside. If you have a fixed setup, then it's always recommended to get it mounted and lined up properly. 
The same goes for the built-in speakers. They'll do a fine job for the odd time, but ideally you will need to connect a proper setup to get the best experience. Now let's take a quick look at the spec sheet to see how these new models compare on paper. We're going to compare them to the UHD 30 and also last year's UHD 42. On paper, the new models have quite a bit going for them in terms of brightness and contrast ratio. The UHD 38 offering a whopping 4000 lumens should allow it to be a great option in living rooms where light control is minimal. The UHD 35 offers 3,600 lumens, which is still a small step up on the older UHD 42. The rest of the specs are pretty much the same, aside from the UHD 42 offering more setup options and a shorter, more adjustable throw range. This would make it easier to set up and it can produce a bigger screen in a smaller space, which is really useful in smaller rooms. The other area that these newer models have a massive lead on is the input lag, now offering 4.2 milliseconds, which equates to just one frame at 240 hertz versus the UHD 30 and 42 at 16.7 milliseconds, which is approximately four frames. If competitive gaming is important to you, then it would make all the difference. All of these projectors can only reach those numbers though when using the enhanced gaming mode and only at the 1080p 240Hz setting. So let's see how the UHD 35 compares against our UHD 42. First up, projection distance. As I mentioned, the UHD 42 has a shorter throw than the UHD 35, with the UHD 42 also offering vertical adjustment up to 10%, which allows you to align your projector up with your screen after you mount it. Next is brightness and contrast. At 3,600 lumens on the UHD 35 versus 3,400 on the UHD 42, you might not think that there'd be much difference. However, the new model definitely offers much brighter whites. This would make it a better option in a room with less light control, like a living room or a bedroom with white ceilings. Next up, we took a look at colour reproduction. We tested this in HDR sim, game and reference modes, as well as with actual HDR content. We hadn't spent any extra time calibrating the picture as we wanted to see an out-of-the-box experience. All of these projectors have pretty extensive menus for adjusting the picture, from the basic presets right through to individual colour adjustment, so there's plenty to change to get what you want. The same theme came out across all of our testing. The UHD 35 offered a brighter overall picture, especially on white and lighter colours. However, it suffered a little on the more bold colours, looking a little bit more washed out. Black levels were exactly the same on both models, which means that the higher contrast ratio in the specs on the new models is only really coming from the bump in brightness. Overall, without having these two side by side, we don't think anyone would question the picture on the UHD 35 or 42 though, and especially with HDR content, the extra brightness made a difference. It's likely that you could get them both very close with some tweaks to the setting, but still have that extra peak brightness. When running reference mode, which is much darker than the others as it looks to reproduce accurate colours, we did see much less of a difference between the two models with less difference in the brightness and colours. Now on to some gaming. This is the main market for all of these models, so both the old and new models are extremely capable. Despite some rigorous testing, we really struggle to show any significant difference between the UHD 42 and the newer UHD 35 when playing less reaction intensive games like Cyberpunk 2077. Even in more intense scenarios, recording on our studio cameras at 60 frames per second, it's just impossible to see that difference between 4 and 16 milliseconds. However, we didn't want to just call it there, so we broke out a high-speed camera and fired up CSGO to see if we could show you the difference. For this, we used the latest Asus Strix SCAR gaming laptop. This features a GeForce RTX 3080 GPU and the fastest screen available on the market right now, running at a whopping 360 hertz. It also features a three millisecond input lag, so it's our benchmark against the projectors. First up, we tested with the new UHD 35. Recording at 480 frames per second, there's basically no difference between the laptop screen and the projector. They're pretty much perfectly in time or so close that we can't see it even at these speeds. Next up, the UHD 42 at 16.7 milliseconds. We expect to see a difference here, and we do. It's not huge even recording at these speeds, but you can see the gun flash is slightly behind the laptop. 
Unless you're a top esports professional, it's unlikely to make any real world difference between the three devices, but we're confident that Optoma's claims of 4.2 milliseconds are spot on. Another thing we looked at in our UHD 42 review video was high image quality when running these high frame rates. There's no point having super high refresh rates if moving images are blurry or ghosted and you can't take advantage. It's great to see that the new models carry this on as a benefit over LCD technology. We hooked up the UHD 35 to the Strix Scar via HDMI and duplicated the output with the laptop running its 360Hz mode and the projector running at 240Hz. Then we started up the simple yet effective UFO test to see how they performed. At the default 960 pixels per second, both pictures look nice and clear with the projector just edging out the laptop for clarity overall. But upping the speed to the fastest 3840 pixels per second, which is so fast that you literally can't see the UFO, it's going so fast, we can see that our high speed recording shows an easy win for the projector with a much better overall clarity. Again, it's extremely unlikely that you could see this difference in the real world. The laptop does have one advantage over the projector for gaming though, and that is variable refresh rate. This does mean that on the projector you're limited to using either V-Sync or something else like Nvidia FastSync to reduce tearing or stutter. Another big improvement on the new UHD35 over the older UHD30 and 42 is the general menus and responsiveness. For example, when switching between the different colour profiles, resolutions or HDMI sources, the change happens instantly on screen, whilst on the older model there was often a huge pause where you had a black screen. In summary, the UHD35 offers a couple of improvements over the previous generation that all add up together to provide a better overall experience. They have ultra low input lag. The menu system is much more responsive. It switches resolutions and color profiles pretty much instantly. And it's got that second HDMI 2.0 port. All of these just make life that little bit easier. On top of that, the UHD 35 and even more so the UHD 38 offer a step up in brightness over the last generation, which makes it the best option for the average living room with little to no light control. The only real downsize for the UHD 35 and 38 versus the more expensive 42 is that initial setup is a little more difficult as they have a longer throw with less optical zoom and no vertical alignment. So overall, three impressive projectors. We hope that this video has helped you. Let us know in the comments which you'd opt for and why. And if you still need any expert advice, get in touch with our helpful team. You can purchase all of the projectors mentioned in this video at scan.co.uk.